Now that we've developed a couple of shortcuts for how to take derivatives, probably the more important part that we're going to need out of this is the ability to interpret what a derivative is. So generally speaking, if y is some function of x, then the derivative, Leibniz notation, would be dy over dx. Prime notation, or Newton notation, would be f prime of x. This can be interpreted as the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x. And I want to put a focus on those last couple words there. With respect to x means that as x is changing, this lets you know how y is going to be changing. For every unit change of x, how much is y going to be changing? So there are a couple of ways that we are going to be interpreting this. The first was in an application to physics. So we'll use s of t to represent a position function. So as time changes, the position of an object changes. This object could be a ball flying through the air. This could be a car driving down a road. It could be lots of different things. So s prime of t would be the instantaneous rate of position with respect to time. So over the course of time, if something's position is changing, you get what's known as a velocity. More specifically, an instantaneous velocity function. If we were interested in an average velocity function, that would be a different formula. Now, <clears throat> velocities could potentially be positive or negative, defining, uh, depending on how you define uh, something's forward motion versus uh, backward motion. So if you take away the forward versus backward or up versus down of this, you get what's known as a speed function. So the absolute value of velocity is going to be a speed function. However, if we go back here and talk about whether something is speeding up or slowing down, velocity could be increasing or it could be decreasing. This is known as an acceleration function. As something's velocity changes, or as an object's uh, velocity changes, we wind up getting a rate of change of velocity over the course of time. That's known as acceleration. Now, whatever units you started with in terms of s and t, the velocity will have units of the units of s divided by the units of t. In fact, that's worth saying back up here, uh, the units of dy over dx are going to be the units of y over the units of x. So if we're looking at something like s prime of t, that would be the units of s divided by the units of t. So some common ones would be things like uh, miles per hour, meters per second, um, parsecs per year. That's a, that's a good one right there. Now, in addition to this, we could also talk about some social sciences. If uh, P of T is a population model, population function or population model, then P prime of T represents the instantaneous rate of change of population over the course of time. This would be the population growth rate. Now this of course assumes that p prime of t is positive, that it would be a growth model. If you calculated p prime of t and you wound up with a negative, it would be a population decay model, the rate at which the population is declining. Then Specifically in economics, there are three specific kinds of functions that we talk about there, and they are all functions of how many units are produced or sold. They are known as revenue, that is R of Q, cost, 
C of Q, and profit. Now, for those who haven't taken economics, here is a rough overview of what these things are. So when an object is created to be sold, the amount of money that you sell it for is known as the revenue that comes in from the sale of that product. The cost would be the cost that it, uh, that it, the cost for you, the producer of the object, to actually produce that object. For example, um, I always default back to pizza because I used to do pizza before I was a professor. We would make pizzas, we would sell them. If I sold a large pizza for $10, then the revenue associated with selling that one pizza would be $10. The cost of making it, though, took into account things like <clears throat> the cost of the dough, the sauce, the cheese, the toppings, also the electricity to run the ovens, the gas to run the ovens, the rent to uh, just own that building. All sorts of things would take place there. If you take the amount of money coming in from the sale of an object and subtract the amount of money that it costs to produce those objects, you have what's known as your profit. Ideally, you want your profit to be a positive number. You want the revenue to outweigh the cost. So Q is going to be the quantity of units sold. So the costs that I mentioned just a moment ago, those are known as the fixed costs uh, in terms of the rent, the electricity, the gas, those sorts of things. We're going to have to pay for those regardless of anything. Things like uh, the toppings and the dough and the cheese and the sauce, those would go into more of a per unit cost. So if you differentiate any of these with respect to the number sold, you get what's known as the marginal version of that. The marginal lets you know on more of a per unit basis what the cost of producing that additional thing is. The units on any of these marginal things would be dollars per unit sold. So generally speaking, a marginal revenue tends to be constant. It's however much you're selling that object for. Marginal costs tend to be pretty close to constant uh, because, again, you're using the same amount of material to produce that object. So marginal profit is usually pretty constant. Um, these things start to get really interesting once you start looking at mass producing things or mass purchasing things. For example, when I go to Costco and purchase a uh, 96 pack of toilet paper versus going over to Meyer and buying, you know, 16 rolls of toilet paper. It's very interesting to look at the per unit cost of those two things. So that's where taking a look at marginal revenue and marginal cost might be really interesting. I just said that buying toilet paper from two different places might be really interesting. Well, that's, uh, well, that's a good contribution for today. In our next videos, we'll actually start producing some of these things, talking about units and interpreting things appropriately.